The latest and greatest in technology is being unveiled at the annual Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas this week. CES is billed as the most powerful tech event in the world, where innovations like snore-reducing pillows, flip phones that can bend, and even a computer you can put in your mouth are being unveiled. But the big star of this year's show, artificial intelligence. Joining us now to help break down what it all means for tech trends in 2024 is Brian Cooley, editor-at-large for CNET. Hey, Brian, thanks so much for joining us. Happy to be here. So AI and VR were at the forefront last year, proving to be one of the most innovative years in more than a decade. Talk to us about what you're seeing with AI this year. Yeah, that mix-up of AI and VR last year were typically put together in what's called the metaverse, which is something of a world of synthetic environments that you get into, usually using headgear, uh, visual goggles. This year, AI is being used in a way that I think is more encouraging. And it's the idea that so many products we own today that are called smart, smartphones, smart TV, smart home products, we all know they really aren't smart. They're connected, they're adaptable, they're very customizable, but they're not really smart. With the application of AI in the few years going forward, those products may actually become smart. That means that they will anticipate our needs more and we'll be able to control them, not necessarily by touching, tapping, or swiping, or speaking, but sometimes by just being. The signals that we give off every day by just being around products aren't really being interpreted yet, but AI could help make that happen. It's kind of a magical frontier. I have a lot of confidence it's going to be real. Wow. So our mind alone, it sounds like, will be able to uh, be able to make these differences in how the gadgets react. Uh, let's talk for a moment about display technology with cutting edge gadgets like phone screens that mimic the look and feel of paper and Samsung's new glare free TV. Yeah, there's a glare-free television from Samsung. Now, this is not new. People have seen glare-free televisions before. They're usually just a matte finish. And those matte finishes tend to disperse the glare, not get rid of it. Samsung's new proprietary technology doesn't appear to be one of those fuzzy matte screens. It doesn't change the off-angle viewing. And it gives you this ability to basically make those lights behind you go away and not show up as hot spots in the television. How many of us have been fighting with this during football parties and now yes. playoff parties that are coming? <laughs> and those are often during the day and you've got windows and lights and they're all making these hot spots on the screen. This technology looks pretty convincing to make that stop. And there's also a new robot that some pet owners might be interested to hear about. Tell us about that. Yeah, the pet robotics area has been coming along for a few years now, kind of since a company called Companion in San Francisco got things going with robotics that have AI in them. This new one is called Oro, O-R-O. It is an actual little robotic device that looks kind of humanoid, a couple feet tall, moves around on its wheels. And what it can do is use a camera and LIDAR, not unlike a self-driving car, to monitor your dog in terms of where it is, what it's doing, what its mood and activity are like. This is part of its AI that does that. It can throw a ball to engage the animal in fun. It can also use treats with a separate robotic feeder to engage in training all while you're not around. And if you do want to see your dog while you're not around, you can actually connect through the camera, kind wow. of like a rolling house security cam and see what's up. Can it walk your dog and clean up after it too? <laughs> I guess that's next. No, uh, I don't but... think you're gonna to wanna to trust it to go outside with your dog just yet. <laughs> not, not, not when there's traffic nearby. And yeah, cleaning up would be very nice. Haven't seen that yet, but I guess you could kind of use a robotic vacuum for that. You've been attending CES for more than two decades now. Is there anything that stands out to you as, as completely useless? And at the same time, I'd ask if there's anything that you see as life-changing. You know, a category that I see that often struggles to get traction are a lot of new cooking technologies. We saw some rather expensive cooktop ranges that some of them cook food by basically electrocuting it. Another one has these robotic heat panels that move around after they measure the thickness of what you're grilling. Uh, these things have been coming for many years. I don't, I haven't seen them have a lot of traction. On the other hand, an area that I think is exciting is I believe the smart home, which is all those light switches and, and our televisions and smart speakers are finally gonna start to knit together in the imminent year or two ahead adding AI so that, let's say I walk into a room, that is a command for the lights to come on, for that zone of the HVAC to warm or cool that room. The TV should probably go on. Uh, maybe the chair starts to recline or gets into massage mode. That kind of smarts should be coming, and the smart home has been sort of disconnected and scattered up until now. But I'm excited that they're going to start to fix that. We're going to look forward to that. All the future just around the corner. Brian Cooley, our thanks to you. 
Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.